on me is get kicked up. So if you come on the Arsenal, uh, Windows key on them, uh, set interactions, go to Arsenal. Yep, done that. Uh, once you've done that, uh, take the magazine out of your weapon. Phase one uh, for our boot, just put an extra one on Saturday so we can get the lads through the out of ten. So thanks for turning up. Uh, so he's not doing it on his own. Uh, so first thing we look at then is the unit itself. So the unit's made up of uh, two rifle platoons, a support company that provides fire support for them platoons, and also we've got uh, support arms attached such as uh, medical. Uh, explosive ordnance disposal unit and we've also got a JHC as well which does all our helicopter lifts flights all that good stuff good okay then if you want to just uh, stand up you need to scroll wheel and you should have a stand up option so I just want to go outside and turn to your right Uh, just stand in front of me, I'll just talk behind you. Okay, so within the uh, platoon then, it's made up of three sections. Uh, usually a section of eight men, uh, within 4IB, due to numbers and people not always being able to attend each night. Uh, that's been bolstered up to uh, up to 10 and can go up to 12 men, depending on what uh, mission task that we're on, just to keep the numbers up. Uh, so within the section group and then the certain key uh, personalities and responsibilities within that section, I'm just going to go through each one. Uh, so the first guy we've got is the point man of the section, um, usually a senior private soldier, has a bit of experience, um, has also attended the search course, so he is a ground sign awareness, uh, looking for IDs and that sort of stuff. He also uh, can carry the Fallon. Uh, what he does then, he is um, assist with the section commander on route planning, so he's getting the section from point A to point B in a safe manner. This is either by use of uh, cover of the ground, and it's usually uh, one of the most switched on soldiers who can actually identify uh, key areas on the ground, so the section commander is not constantly um, telling him where to go. He can plan a route and maneuver that section covertly uh, and using the good pieces of cover on the ground and all that sort of stuff. That's your point, man. Yeah, next thing I have within the section then is your section commander, uh, corporal in rank, has attended during NCO CADA and SCBC, which is your section commander's battle course to get him into the role of section commander. He's responsible for the uh, command and control of the section, works closely under the platoon commander um, for his orders and that sort of stuff. And he also conducts the training side of the section, making sure that they are competent and current in all of the uh, tactical procedures that he's carry out any sort of missions and that when he's on operations as well. The next one we have within the section then is a anti-tag specialist. So this guy is currently carrying the uh, ASM, so it's an anti-structural munition launcher, capable of taking out uh, fortified bunk positions, uh, can blast uh, holes into walls and also take out uh, soft skin vehicles such as um, your Hilux pickup trucks and that sort of thing, the technicals. Again, has completed the uh, specific weapon lesson 
for the ASM, and that's one of your uh, AT stroke and ammunition structural uh, weapon system specialist. And then the last guy we have in that fire team is a sharpshooter. He's carrying the uh, sharpshooter rifle, able to take out targets from 600 out to 800 meters, so he's got a bit of further reach than a normal standard issued rifle. And is proficient at engaging uh, key opportunity targets in the direction of the section commander. Within that four man grouping, then, this is known as Charlie Fire Team. Within Charlie Fire Team, then, Point Man, Section Commander, uh, one of the first AT specialists, and your sharpshooter. Any questions on Charlie Fire Team? Done. Done. Okay, now look at the Delta Fire Team, then. So within that, we've got a private soldier with a rifle. He's either going to be another point man or potentially a team medic. If he's a team medic, he wouldn't be the first man in that uh, team, but that's another role within uh, the section itself. So either a second point man for a Delta Fire team or a team medic. So the team medic then carries um, a bit more extra medical equipment, has done a bit of uh, extra medical training, and is uh, capable of providing first aid uh, at point of wounding on the battlefield so he can patch you up uh, stabilize you and then from there then you'd be extracted back to a casual exchange point with a three med medic called technician who's got extra um, trauma kit that can deal with you and then get you uh, stabilized ready to get extracted either by uh, foot by ground or by air uh, back to a, a roll through uh, hospital get you patched up and then get you uh, reinserted back in okay the next one then we've got dot fire team is the uh, sections 2ic Lance Corporal in rank, has attended uh, junior NCO cadre and is the basically the administrator of the section, ensuring that the section is uh, good to go with ammunition, uh, water, rations. Also controls the uh, rates of fire within the suppression fire team in the attack and works closely with the platoon sergeant to ensure that his troops are combat effective at all times. Now the next one then is a second uh, AT base carrying the NLO, capable of taking out um, medium armoured vehicles such as EMPs, PTRs and also can take out earlier uh, generation of tanks. Um, for things like T-72s, T-80s you may need um, two strikes with the uh, NLO itself to have a, a kill but can take out um, optics, radio antennas, and also cause mobility kills on a newer generation tank. Uh, failing that, within the uh, 4IB, we have the uh, javelin operators that are capable of taking out a newer generation of tanks. And the last one is your automatic weapon system, so GBMG, 7.62 in calibre, a good piece of kit, and this is your um, Basically, the main fire suppression weapon system within Delta Fire Team gives you 25% of your actual section's firepower. So it's a key uh, character within the section to provide uh, fire support in the assault. One more question. <coughs> yeah, send it. Uh, is it common for them to wear sidearms as well? Or? Uh, depending on the operations. Um, so we're going into a coin operation. So soldiers carry personal protect weapons as well. So when they're in camp, uh, due to the green on blue threat, so it's working with other um, national forces. So, for example, um, Afghan army, um, there has been a series of attacks from green forces on blue forces. So, um, the British army purchased the Glock 17 as a personal protection weapon, so you're not constantly carrying your rifle about with you. So, if you're uh, sat in an ops room or you're sat in a room, um, going to the cookhouse or anything like that, you've always got some form of protection on you at all times. But at times you will see, uh, depending on the operation, uh, pistols issued. Oh, gotcha. Thank you. All right, gents. Everyone hear me, yeah? Yep. yep. So, last thing to go through on your self interact menu is radios. So, if you could all go to radios, highlight your ANPRC 343 for me. Yep. The radio should come up in front of your face. Let me know when that's done. Yep. Yep. Perfect. So, 
This is your free for fee used for intersection radio comms. So if one of you is having a piss all the way down there and one of you is having a wank in the hut all the way up there, you can stay in contact with each other. Have a little chin wag, let each other know what you're feeling. At the top left knob, that's your volume. Top right knob is your channel. See where the barcode is? Yep. yep. That's your handle. Press that to detach it. On the right piece, there's a little blue dot at the bottom. That's yeah. your block selector. Go to block 13 for me by left clicking your left mouse button. Done. Done. Press yeah. the barcode again to attach the handle and go to channel 3 for me. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Everyone know the key bind for that radio? Yeah. Perfect. So what you're going to do for me is you're going to give me a radio check on that frequency. To do this, uh, you will say your name, uh, radio check, block 13, channel 3. So, example. What? What's the keybind, sorry? Uh, it should be left alt caps lock. Left alt caps lock. That should be it for PTT1. So, if everyone's on the radio frequency, they're going to hear me do a radio check. Hudson, radio check, block 13, channel 3. Simple yeah, as that. Yeah. Francis, you give me a radio check. Francis, radio check. Block 13, channel 3. Perfect. Radio check, OK. Fisher? Fisher, radio check. Block 13, channel 3. Yep. Radio check, OK. Load up. Load up, radio check. Block 2, channel 3. Try, channel three. try left control shift. Oh, sorry, left control caps. Um... Yeah, start at radio check, block 12, uh, channel 13, channel 3. Try left shift caps, I've got oh, all he's my on the wrong. He's on the wrong block. Is block it? 12. No, I'm, on, I'm, on, I'm on 12. Oh, block 13. 13. Block 13. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Change that, make yeah, sure I'm on, I'm on 13, I'm on 13. Block 13, channel 3, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Give me a radio check. Block 13, channel 3, start at radio check. Yeah, radio check, okay. Yeah, I just so remember... It's just, it's just yeah. caps lock. Yeah, remember when you're doing your radio check that you say your name beforehand, just so you know your, your section IC and your section 2 IC. Know that you're listening in and uh, just not chinning them off. Okay, so what we're going to go through now then is uh, the reaction to contacts. So sections and individuals in the sections must be trained to continue the advance into battle. So if you imagine um, you're advancing towards that hill, you've got a friendly section to your right, you've got a friendly section to your left, and we're all advancing forward. Now potentially, um, one of these sections may come under contact, therefore you need to be able to identify if it's contact aimed at you or aimed at somebody else. If it's aimed at somebody else, then you mustn't react and you must continue the advance pushing forward. Okay, so we're covering that ground. Um, Effective enemy fire then is rounds landing round your feet or you've taken a casualty or if you were to continue on that line of advance then you're going to take mass casualties. That's when you should deem that you are under effective enemy fire. Um, so what we need to do is we need to react to it. Now we react to it then we carry out a drill called the RTR drill. So Romeo Tango Romeo. R standing for return fire. T standing for take cover and the last R then is returning appropriate fire. What I mean by this then is we're advancing forward as a section. Everyone within the section itself is drilled and rehearsed in this drill so that what we're trying to achieve is um, put a heavy rate of fire so that in position which hopefully gives us a freedom of movement. Okay, so we can maneuver the battlefield and assault that position. So the first R then is return fire. How we do this is Patrolling along, come under enemy uh, contact. First thing we do is we identify where that contact's coming from, general location, and we fire two to three rounds, uh, unaimed shots in the general direction of the enemy. So if you imagine if you're a 10 man section, all 10 are facing the enemy direction, they all fire two to three rounds uh, in his general direction. What they should do then is send a wall of lead towards that enemy's location, hopefully either hitting him if you're lucky, or at least getting his head down, giving him a bit of suppression, 
So it gives us a bit of time and a bit of freedom then to take out the second part of the drill, which is taking cover. So how we do this then is we dash forward, we get down in the prone, crawl to a piece of cover if there's a piece available. We then observe the ground to his front to try and identify the enemy's location. If we've identified it, we bring the weapon up, we look through the sights, and then we do the final drill, which is return appropriate fire. So in the initial stages of contact, the appropriate fire that you want to be firing as individual riflemen is rapid fire, and we'll cover this later on, on the reactions uh, to fire control orders. So you take control of your weapons, and show that you load with a magazine. Uh, go into your inventories, fit your LDS sights onto your weapon systems. Okay, yeah, so we're going to advance forward on uh, contact front. Everybody shouts contact front so everyone's alerted to the threat. Two or three rounds in the general direction. So when you're firing, it's not a name shot. You're just bringing the weapon system up. Uh, two or three rounds in the general direction. Then dash forward, get into probe position, roll, observe the ground, and fire. So if you want to take it that the uh, bunker at the top of that hill, the reference point, that'll be your enemy position that you observe, and then you return fire onto that. So advance at the walk. Contact front. Contact front. Contact front. Two or three rounds. Just forward. Get down. Crawl. Observe. And return appropriate fire. Okay. Stop. 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 Stand up. Uh, Fisher, just push forward slightly. Get level. Contact front. Contact front. Dash down all observe sights and fire. Stop, stop, stop. Stand up. Advance. Uh, so just be aware then that the obvious to cover would probably be that bun line to your rear. So react accordingly. Contact front. Contact front. Contact front. Good. Stop, 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 lads. Yeah, advance. Uh, advance, sorry. Last one, lad. Contact front. Contact front. Attack front. Stop, stop, stand up. Keep your weapons pointing down the rage. Unload. Contact front. 
Once you've unloaded, weapons come to your shoulder. And close it. Any questions on the RTR drill, Jed? None. None. Yeah. Okay. Managed to grasp that. As you imagine, obviously, if that's an eight man, ten man section, the amount of uh, fire that's going to go down there, hopefully, will suppress that enemy, we'll giving you time then to get into that piece of cover. So you can actually cover the ground itself and then return the uh, appropriate fire. Uh, from there, then, what you're going to get then is it should be a fire control order from your section commander. And then he will take ownership of the battle and then uh, pass it down to his two IC to control the rates of fire and all that good stuff while he comes up with his plan. Uh, makes his battle estimate whether he's going to assault that position. Is he going to request another section to assault? And he just uses his section as a suppressing section. Uh, comes up with his QBOs and carries out what he's got with his plan. Uh, so what we're going to cover next then is the fire control orders that will be issued by section commander or section two IC. Uh, so we've covered uh, reacting to contact, we've covered fire control orders. Next thing we need to look at is actually being able to manoeuvre around the battle uh, battle space. So what we look at now is fire movement. Uh, basic principles should be employed uh, during any move. <coughs> uh, simplest should remember as two phrases, there's no movement without fire. So if you are in contact, want to move, always make sure there's someone providing cover fire to enable you to do that movement to keep the uh, position suppressed itself. Um, also then, if we're not in contact, it's always good to use uh, one foot on the ground method. Um, so you imagine Charlie Fire Team, Delta Fire Team in a line here. Uh, we're traveling uh, north. Uh, it's always good to get one fire team moving forward and one fire team covering, Okay, depending on the threat as well. Having one foot on the ground. Body-body uh, system then, uh, this describes the method of pairing up with a battle partner uh, during and post patrols. Uh, working in pairs means that you can look after each other, uh, help each other out with administration and also look after each other in uh, movement. So, Stoddart and McDonald, you'll be a buddy pair. Fisher, you'll be with me and you'll be my buddy partner uh, for later on in demonstrations. Right. Next thing we're going to talk about, um, before we move, uh, we need to carry out a boxing drill. Um, basically, we're preparing ourselves to move um, prior to getting up and actually either moving forwards or backwards, left and right. So, if you imagine, I've gone to ground, firing away, and I've been ordered to move either forward, left, right, rearwards. Um, I'm not just going to stand up. I'm firing away, I'm firing away, I get down, pop back up, fire a few more rounds. That enemy might have trained his sights onto me when I go back down again. So if I was to uh, stand up and just move, eventually I'm going to get hit. So what we need to do is the boxing drill. So how we do this then is if I get told the order to move, I'll prepare to move. All I'm going to do is I'm going to crawl back slightly. And I'm going to push left or right before I get up. So when I do get up, he thinks I was there when I went to ground last time, but I've actually pushed over here. So by the mm. time he's gone, oh shit, he's not there anymore, or he's there, by the time he's aimed his sights onto me, hopefully if I've already pushed and moved a bound. When I'm moving a bound, uh, the sort of distances that you want to be covering, where I use, um, I'm up and see me and down as a, as a cover note. So, boxing off. Prepare to move. I get told to move. Stand up. I'm up. He sees me. I'm down. Again. Push left or right slightly. Or re engaging. Uh, so that's the basic bounding method. So prepare to move. Box off. Move. You get up. You. Uh, Dash forward, I'm up, he sees me, I'm down. That's your time that you want to be exposing yourself. Um, you don't want to be going any further than that, because the longer that you're up, the quicker, the more time he's going to have to train on you and shoot you. So we keep it simple. Up, he sees me, I'm down. 
you try to cover a, a large distance. So if you imagine your fire team is uh, where that range flag is, for whatever reason you're back here, you're not going to sprint from here to that range flag. You're going to do it in bounds, okay, to get up level with them. If you imagine narrow head, that last guy is quite far back. So if you narrow head and you get ordered baseline, that end man on the left and right, they've got some distance to travel to get forward into a baseline. Um, so instead of just running straight forward, you're going to have to do it in bounds. So, boxing off. I'm up. It sees me. I'm down. I'm up. It sees me. I'm down. And you'll just continue that until you get level. Again, so you're not exposing yourself running the full 100 meter distance and probably getting wiped out. So, any questions on the boxing drill? No. Ready to move? Any questions on the uh, length of bound? No, no, I don't think so. No. Um, so what we're going to cover now then is working as a pair in fire and movement. So Hudson's going to be my battle buddy for this demonstration. We're not going to fire. Uh, we're just going to show you how to move as uh, individuals. So what you need to do is once you've gone to ground, you've out yard, buff. Now down, both engaging the enemy, and we and Hudson are going to advance. So we need to communicate with each other. The easiest way to do it is by PRR, but I'll just shout for now. So Hudson, you cover me. I'm going to prepare to move, and I'm going to protect first bound. Roger. You should acknowledge, acknowledge me, so prepare to move, boxing off. I'll let him know that I'm moving. So I'm moving. Bang. Up, he sees me. I'm Bang. down. Bang. I'm now firing, set, bang, 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 you should prepare to move. Prepared to move. Move. I'm move still in. firing, providing Mark. cover of fire. Excuse me, I'm down. Set. Bang, bang, prepare to move. Bang, bang, so bang. Prepare to move. Bang, bang, move. Bang. I'm up. Bang. Sees me. Bang. I'm down. Bang. Set. Pet move. move. Prepare to move. Move in. I'm up. He sees me. I'm down. Set. Prepare to move. Bang. Pet move. Move. Move in. I'm up. He sees me. I'm down. Um, so when we're doing that, we're doing the caterpillar method. So what the caterpillar method is, if you imagine uh, McDonald just take a bound forward, just walk forward a couple of paces. So he's gone firm there, just facing off, uh, west mate. So he's gone there, I'm moving, I'm coming level with him on my next move. Uh, that's caterpillar. Leapfrogging then is an extra bound in front. So McDonald's gone firm. If we if you get told that you're leapfrogging, what we do is going to go, I'm up, he sees me, I'm down, I'm up, he sees me, I'm down, so I go one bound past him. All this does, it just covers ground a lot quicker, but again, you're taking risk because you're exposing yourself um, a little bit longer, but you're able to cover more ground because you're going that extra bound. So I go firm here, and then, uh, who's that? McDonald's. McDonald's, is it? Yeah, so yeah, McDonald's yeah. leapfrogging, so he should come level with me and then pass me. So he's up, he sees me, I'm down, he takes a bounce, so we can cover more ground. I'm up, he sees me, I'm down, I'm up, he sees me, I'm down. Covering more ground. That's your leapfrogging method. Yeah, for that, Jets, yeah? Yep, yep. So rule of form, default settings, just bound, um, caterpillar, so level with your buddy, level with your buddy, level with your buddy, and leapfrogging, get level with your buddy and push one bound past him. So we can cover more ground a lot quicker. They two methods of movement. Um, for withdrawing, coming backwards is no different as going forwards, other than prepare to move your box off, spin yourself round, and then you move backwards and you're off. And mm. when you when you get to your and down, turn back round, face the enemy direction, return fire, and cover your body coming back. 
practice that in a bit. So if you want to get covered off facing southwest, spread yourselves out. Uh, McDonald's, Stoddart, you're a pair. Fisher and myself will be a pair. And then Hudson's just going to watch the other two guys down there. I'm on your left. Uh, Fisher, just come with me, mate. Just yep. get a bit separate from them. So we're working as a, a buddy team. So we'll take it with RT Yard. We've come under contact. We've now gone firm, gone to ground. We're now returning fire. And we've been told to second e mate, so I can see you. So we've now been told to move. So, so Fisher, I'll give covering fire. You prepare to move. Right. Uh, you're crawling back, okay. pushing left, pushing right. Move. Get up. It's easy. A down. Set. Not covering me. Trying to move. Shooting. Move it. I'm up. Sees me. I'm down. Set. I'm Preparing to move. Prepare to move. Set. Prepare. Move. 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 Up. He sees me. Um. Paint to move. Move it. Well, he sees me. I'm down. Set. Prepare. Moving. Move. Up, he sees me. Down. Set. Uh, so next one we're leapfrogging, so I'm gonna go down past you. So prepare it. Move it, I'm up, he sees me, I'm down, I'm up, he sees me, I'm down. Set. Prepare it. Set, move. Moving. Up, he sees me, I'm down, I'm up, he sees me, I'm down. Set. So happy with that. Yep. Uh, just closing by the flag and we'll meet up again. We'll go through bounding. Not right. bounding. Peeling. But a lot of practice with that firing actually. So once you hear me firing pretty much is that when, that, when you hear cover fire from me, that's pretty much you good to prepare to move and move. Yeah. You don't have to keep constantly shouting, but we we'll get to do it to get you communicating and that, but when you start getting um, slick at it, then as long as you've got covering fire, you know you're ready, you're, you're good to move. So yeah. we'll practice that. Yeah, I'm sure. All right. Here's my weapon, make sure I'm magazining. Uh, we'll just patrol as normal. Yep. Um, Head west. We'll step off. Uh, we've got contact fronts. So we'll out here. Contact front. Yeah, Prepare to bound. I'll cover you first. Yep. Covering. Moving. Down. Set. Up, oh, it sees me, I'm down. Covering. Moving. It sees me. Um. Covering. Moving. Up, oh, it me, I'm down. Moving. Um. Covering. He sees me, I'm down. Moving. Down. Covering. Move it. Move it. Loading. Moving. Up edge. 
Shot me. Stand up there, mate. Yep. So uh, if I'm covering fire and you're up, I'll uh, I'll shout stoppage, and then you should get down straight away because you've got no covering fire coming coming in. Ah, uh, if you hear someone shout stoppage, just get down. If I'm that guy's covering you and you hear him shout stoppage, just so you've got um you've got no cover fire while you're moving there. So again, always think of the rule: no movement without fire. Um. Happy with that. Any dramas? Yeah, no worries. Just pass and so on. Yeah. Contact front. Contact front. Right. One of you now take the incentive to start one. Caterpillar. Uh, so that the caterpillar. Yeah. He's boxing himself off. Beef stew. So the Mark, you see him down. Down. Yeah. Stay down. Now prepare right, to right. leap from. Yeah. Yeah. He's boxing yeah. himself off. Right. Move on. Boys happy with that, yeah? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Just remember your spatial awareness, don't because you'll be doing that with live rounds. If you run across each other's arcs, you're gonna fucking one of you's gonna end up with a broken leg and T one. Mm -hmm. Happy with that? Yeah. Very happy. Cool. Cool. Let me go over communication, Sean. Hey, Cadre, yeah. Uh, you just close in in front of me, gents. Uh, as I mentioned with the boys um, over on my side, situ uh, situational awareness is key during fire and maneuvering. You must do your part to communicate wherever practical uh, to ensure the remainder of your team know what you are doing. Ensure the momentum is maintained and that soldiers do not move without covering fire. That makes sense to you all so far. Cool? Mm -hmm. Yep. 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 Every man is a link man. Communication between troops can be conducted by whatever means practical, whether that be your PRR, your VHS, or voice. However, you should not become too over-reliant on one method alone. Examples of where you must communicate are if you're put in rounds down range and you uh, expend all the rounds in your mag, uh, you're going to need to change magazines. If you're moving as a buddy team, you one of you is not putting rounds down range, which means... One of you is not going to be able to remove because no movement without cover. So whatever means practical, whether that be your VHF, your PRR or voice, you run out of magazines, you get your click, click, you shout magazine, reload your magazine. And it's imperative that you let him know back in when you're ready to put rounds down range again. And then now you've got a full magazine around. There's movement with fire. Makes sense so far? Yep. yep. Same thing uh, when you get a stoppage, you can get a stoppage in armor. Once you've uh, been putting a lot of uh, rounds for your weapon system, it will begin to get hot and may jam. Uh, you'll carry out the same action as you would with a magazine change. So you shout stoppage. You'll carry out, jam, uh, carry out the uh, immediate action or weapon jam by using shift R to clear the jam. Once the jam is uh, cleared, you'll say back in and continue putting rounds down range. Be careful though with your fire rate because the weapon system is still hot and may still jam. So, Another yeah. time you will need to communicate is if you're changing your direction or moving into a piece of cover. Makes sense. You don't want to cross arcs. Don't want to end up with one of you getting shot in the back. And lastly, passing orders or messages from the team commander or others in the team. Uh, if everyone's communicating by voice, again, every man's a link man. You pass that message down the chain. Everyone happy with that? Yep. 
-hmm. Cool. Uh, Stodart, what do you say when you need to change your magazine? Yeah, magazine. And once you change your magazine? Ready. They back in. Uh, yeah. McDonald, what do you say when you have a stoppage? Uh, jammed. There you go. Gout stoppage. Yeah, clear your stoppage with what key bind? Uh, I'm not 100% sure, and yet I do need to check that because uh, I've been having some issues with some key binders. That's fine. Uh, the stop it, the default uh, key to clear stoppage is Shift R. When the stoppage is clear, you shout back in. And Fisher, every what three forms of communication can you use? Direct speech, radio. I take that as the or... answer. Two types of radio: PR and VHF. Happy with that? Yep. Cool. Okay, I believe we'll be looking at withdrawing from contacts now. Do you want me to yep. go through that as well, or do you want to do it? No, that's right, mate. Uh, so, withdrawing from contact, so section's gone firm, at a yard. Um, we're looking at the ground, potentially, we might need to withdraw from the contacts. It might be bigger than what we can take on as a section, therefore, we need to be able to manoeuvre backwards. Um, so as previously taught for forwards, principles are still the same for moving rearwards. And um, the only difference being that we um, deploy smoke as well. Um, so my key bind for smoke is seven. Make sure it's selected on smoke and not on HE grenades. So come under contact and the order that you're going to get from the section commander would be prepare to withdraw. On that then, on the word withdraw, Everyone pops smoke grenades to the front. We'll let the smoke build up. And then again, we'll either move by individuals in this buddy. So one's covering, firing, while the other one's moving backwards. Again, this can be done at fire team level or at section level as well. So Charlie fire team covers, Delta fire team withdraws back. Um, so we can see a demonstration of this. Weapon gun. Rifle for some reason, that's in my hand. Oh shit. Oh, 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 my battle buddy's covering fire me, I'm preparing to move, so I'm boxing off. When I get up, I'm just moving backwards. So I'm up, he sees me, I'm down. I'm covering him, he's ready to move, and then he moves backwards. On the withdrawal itself, it's normally best used to the uh, leapfrog method, so we can cover that ground a lot quicker and get out, uh, out of dodge as quick as possible. Any questions on that, Jeds? No, no. No, no, so no. we're going to take it then. It's Stoddart, McDonald, you are Charlie Fire Team, Fisher, you're going to be Delta Fire Team. Um, so again, just react to my orders. So again, remember what just talks about communication. Everyone shouts everything that I say, everyone repeats it and shouts back so everybody hears it. Mm -hmm. I think so we've got to spread yourselves out facing southwest. Go from patrolling along RTR drill, bounding forward and withdrawing back. So, if you advance, contact front. Contact front. Protection. 600 meters, bunker on hill, a rapid fire. Try fighting, pair to move. So, you start the shouting, try fighting, pair to move. Ready to move. Yeah, you're moving as a fire team now, so you're both moving well. You're, you're uh, going to stay there, Fisher, because you're Delta. Don't move. You're putting rounds down range at this time. Right. Uh, so that just crawls forward a bit to your level with McDonald. Okay, Delta fire team, pet move. Now you box off. That's prepared. Move. Moving. I'm up. Excuse me, I'm down. Set. Charlie, pack, move. Yeah, 
soft goal backwards, but left the right slightly, and you play all three together. So, move. Come up. Excuse me. I'm down. Shot my team. Pet, move. Pet. Move. That's moving. Come up. He sees me. I'm down. That's it. Magazine. Smoke down, get your smoke down. Back in. Smoke up. Fire team will give cover and fire. Tommy fire team prepare to withdraw. Withdraw. Oh, it seems to be up down. I'm up, it seems to be up down. Facing the enemy direction, so we can give cover and fire. Good. Got a fire team, pet will draw. Okay. Do your box drill, do your box drill. Same as you would. You're always facing the front still. You don't turn around until you run back. Roger. That's prepared. Yeah, just like that, deliberate. It's moving. I'm up. He sees me, he's down. Yeah, try fighting, pet withdraw. Got fire team, pet withdraw. You smoke out. Smoke up. We're up a little bit. Here we go. Yep. yep Moving. I'm up. Excuse me. I'm down. Uh, That's stop, it. Stop, stop, stop. Stand up. Let's close it, guys. And that continues until somebody identifies a break clean point. Okay, so what a break clean point is somewhere that we can push left or right. So what we'll probably do is keep withdrawing back to a level of them rocks and then we'd uh, peel off and get behind them rocks as a piece of cover. And um, peeling we're going to cover now. So peeling basically is how we cover the ground moving left and right. So we've done forwards and backwards now, we're looking at left and right. So we're using the peeling method. So we've stood that, we just want to turn around and go take a knee. Push a take a knee. And let them all take it eight. Push up level with them. Just push up a little bit. That's it. Okay, looking to me so you can see me then. Just turn in first big. So we're all in a, a baseline and we get told to peel left. I'm the last man on the right side, so I know that I'm going to be moving first and we're moving to the left. But what I do, the box off as normal. I'll, I'll crawl backwards, I'll push left and right, and then I'll get up. As I get up, I'm going to look to the right flank just to make sure that that's clear before I move. And then down there, and then I come round and I pull back and I start pushing to the left. So I'll do that in real time. So, let's peel left. I know I'm the end man, so I'm moving first. I box off. Second E, I look to the right hand flank to make sure it's clear, and then I just come behind you. As I'm coming past, I'm just going to let Fisher know, last man moving. So then Fisher knows, as soon as I've gone past him, he's the next guy that's going to move. Does that make sense, gents? Yeah? Mm -hmm. yep. yep. I'm moving, and all I'll do is slot myself in. Here. And the next guy should filter in to my left hand side, and that just keeps going on and so on. So, is it Fisher that's on the end now? Uh, yes, yep. it is. Yep. So if you want to withdraw. Peel left. Left. Right. Looks to the flank. Nice man. Let's start out now. He goes firm. Start out now. Prepare to move as the guy's just gone past him. And a move. Make sure you check your right flank. Yeah. Do that That's flank fine. check. Yeah. yeah, just hold it there. Yeah. So imagine I'm going to be peeling to the, to the right. When I'm checking my left, check the left, 
and then I sweep round this way. I don't sweep round that way. Okay, yeah. So, so we've pet move, feeling right. I get up, check the left flank, and I just maneuver around like that. So I continue peeling left. Yeah. So as soon as you get that last man stood out, you're preparing to move. Trying to move. Last man. Trying to move. Remember the last man call. Yeah. Last man. Last man. There. Last man. Yeah, that just continues on until you get told to stop healing, so stop healing. Stand up, advance. Let's get level with him, Fisher. Cut up front. To front. Okay, prepare to be on left. Prepare to be on. Flank stood. Moves round. Shouts last man is going past. Last man. Gonna be a box off Bruce. Last man. Last man. Moving. Last man. Yeah, just try and get level with the guy as well. So you're not going in at an incline. So. Last man. Moving. Last man. Get okay, you'll be last Magazine. bound, Fisher. Last bound. <laughs> Okay, stop, 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 stand up. Uh, exit telegraph pull, gents. Uh, back to ITC, and then we'll go get the ACMT ranged up. If there's no questions on, moving forwards, backwards, left, or right. Oh, that's Come, boys. Yeah, so wear helmets at all times. Weapons point down the range at all times. If you've got a weapon that's loaded, make sure it's pointing down the range at all times. You will be on the range having to come back. You will be walking backwards, not turning around and walking towards back towards me with loaded weapons. And you are to load or reload any ammunition unless instructed to do so by myself. Range out itself, then um, two main types of three shoots that we do uh, snap shooting, rapid shooting, and uh, combination shoots. I'm going to show an example of each. Uh, also, can you just demonstrate this one for me? I'll explain which one it is. Uh, so, this is a rapid shoot. So, on a rapid shoot, you'll get an exposure of a target. Uh, normally, you will fire five rounds rapid into the target as shown by demonstration so the target will come up at five rounds rapid the target will go down that is a rapid shoot a snap shoot is one exposure one round each exposure example of a snap shoot then
Tag goes down. Tag comes back. One round. Tag goes back down. And stole it there. And then what we've got is a combination shoot. So it'll be walking forwards. Target will come up. You'll fire five rounds at the target um, from the standing. Then you'll drop to the knee and fire a further five rounds. So I'll just do an example of that. Target should come up. Three, four, five. Take a knee and then five rounds rapid. Then you'll be told to stand up and walk backwards back to your firing point. So the weapon points down the range at all times. Any questions on the shoots, Jets? Nope. Now, if you want to fill up a firing point from that side, because I think lane 3 is a bit buggy on this, so if you fill up from that side, grab a lane each, and we'll go through a practice shoot first. So what we're going to do then is we're going to go through a practice shoot at various ranges. You were to fire um, just a couple of rounds in each fire position, so that'll be standing, kneeling and prone at each range. Um, don't fire everything off at the first target because you won't have any practice shots at 400 metres, which are probably the ones that you want to practice more on. Um, so the first targets will be at 50 metres. With magazine, off to eight rounds load. Be aware on the shoots as well, there is to be no bipod resting either, gents. It's all done. Uh, just in the normal stances. I say it's time now to have a drink and food if you need to, so you don't pass out halfway through. Oh, yeah. So our first targets will be at 50 metres. Target stop. So you're free to engage, practicing, uh, kneeling, standing and prone at 50 metres. Two rounds in each uh, position. Next will be 100 metres. Meters. Four hundred meters. Once you've emptied that magazine, just stand up so that you're finished. Complete the full. 
full unload, quick weapons on your back, and you can go to lap top on your left hand side and check your scores. If you practice. Five rounds rapid, and they're standing unsupported at 50 metres, watch and shoot, watch and shoot. Sorry, I got confused with the watch and shoot. Okay, so I'll watch and shoot, the target will pop up. And that's you free to engage the target. Okay, any practice, listen to details of practice two. From the front, unsupported position, a range of 100 metres, five rounds rapid, five rounds rapid. Dot the prom position, watch the shoot. Watch and shoot. Practice this at details of practice three. You'll fire from a nearly unsupported position. Targets will be at 100 meters. You want to fire a five round snap, so one round at each exposure. Any questions on practice three? Done. Dot the nearly unsupported position. Watch and shoot. Watch and shoot. End of practice, stand up. Uh, the next shoot will be your combination shoot. So when ordered to do so, you will advance forward to the point, so make sure you're on walking now. When ordered to do so, you will advance down the range on appearance of the target, you are to fire five rounds rapid from the standing, then adopt the kneeling position and fire a further five rounds at the target. Any questions on details of practice four? None. 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 Advance. Practice, stand up, walk backwards, back to your start point, keep your weapons pointing down the ridge. Listen to the 
the details of the next practice. From a standing on support position, we fire targets at 200 metres. It'll be five rounds snap. One round at each exposure. From a standing support position, watch and shoot, watch and shoot. End of practice, change back. It's the details of practice six. From the knee lead on support position, you need to fire at 200 metres. This will be five rounds snap, so one round at each exposure. Any questions on practice six? Um, I've lost like three magazines. <coughs> uh, I don't have any mags left. Picked them up at the start, but they're not there. Okay, unload your rifle, uh, go back to the box, get some more. <laughs> have to wait a minute, so I'll put some more in. Fucking ground spike a, a good 10 15 kilometers away from me. That's what I was calling the fucking nearest. I just looked at a whole bunch of objects, so it should be fine now. Yes. Yeah, I'm just helping you. Can you repeat the information for the shoot again, please? So, where did we get to practice six, was it? Nearly on support at 200 metres, five rounds snap, one round at each exposure. Did we get to practice? I don't know what I was going to say. Fuck me. Uh, practice six, one round at each exposure, watch and shoot, watch and shoot. I was going to say I was about to use my long gun. Oh, for fuck's sake, it's still airing the fuck out. And the practice round seven. Prone position, 200 metres, be five round rapid, five round rapid. Any questions on practice seven? 
Five rounds rapid, watch and shoot, watch and shoot. Listen to details of practice eight. From the prone position, you'll be fired at 300 meters. It'll be 10 rounds rapid. 10 rounds rapid. Watch and shoot. Watch and shoot. Round eight, let's see the details of round nine from the standing on support position. You'll be firing at 300 meters. This will be a five round snap. A five round snap. Any questions? Watch and shoot. Watch and shoot. Practice details of the final practice will be from the prom position at 400 meters. You will have nine rounds, it'll be nine rounds a snap. Nine rounds snap. I wasted rounds there. Yep, change your bag. Can you repeat the fire? Yep, so you've got nine rounds from the prone position. Targets will be at 400 meters. You want to fire one round at each exposure. Uh, I've got a tracer mag. Can I have a non tracer mag, please? A lane five. Okay, practice time, prone position, 400 metres, one round each exposure, watch and shoot, watch and shoot.
Yeah, they tell stand up. Unload, once you've done the full unload, place your BFAs back on, and put your weapons on your shoulders and clothes back into the seated area, I'll take your scores while we're doing that, and we'll run through your lace reports. When uh, Mr. Shum's ready, you'll get your ACMT results. Oh uh, boy. Pass, pass mark, 42. Marksman score, 58 and above. Uh, Fisher, 50. Pass. Oh, 58. Pass. Marksman. Dodda, 50. Pass. And McDonald, 59. Marksman, pass. Past your ACT. Uh, this concludes P one.